it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures, and today we're talking about attacking artificial intelligence systems. So we've made videos before about uh, about artificial intelligence and the ramifications, but but one of the things that's really clearly emerging in this uh, second half of 2023 is that the big tech players are the ones who are making the LLMs, they're making the next generation AIs, and they're making the major applications that are uh, basically running, going to be running these amazing tools of the future. And how are we as cybersecurity professionals supposed to audit this kind of, of stuff? So the first thing I want to point out is that if you haven't played with AI more than just using ChatGPT or Claude AI or something like that, you really should be, right? I highly recommend you learn how these things work. Unfortunately, one of the things you can't really do in your home or you know garage or just with spinning up a few computers on, on Amazon is train a really relevant LLM. We're going to talk about how big these things are in a minute. But one of the things you can do is you can go to places like Hugging Face and you can actually download AI models and you can run them in basically services that are designed to run LLMs places like uh, runpod.io, where you can literally go in there, fire up a multi-core GPU system and run your favorite uh, you know, LLM models that you've been downloaded from, uh, from, from Hugging Face. But one of the things you're not gonna be able to do is probably train a really, really, really big AI system. And, and why is that? Well, if you look at the recent executive order that came out of the, the Biden administration, released on Halloween, which I thought was kind of kind of funny, they actually call out to uh, private industry and, and, and the government how they want to use AI. And there's a lot of good stuff in there, like, hey, like, don't kill people with AI, don't, don't do certain things. But it's really interesting from a technology point of view what they're worried about. So they call out two things. They, they basically say that, one, if you're making a, a large LLM, they, they have two points on a system that if you're building it, you they want to know about it, right? So the first thing is any model that was trained using a quantity of computing power greater than 10 to the 26 integer of floating point operations or using primarily biological sequence data and using a quantity of computing power greater than 10 to the 23rd of floating operation. Now we'll talk about what this means in a second, right? The second thing they said is any computing cluster that has a set of machines physically co-located in a single data center transitively connected by data center networking of over 100 gigabits a second and having a theoretical maximum computing capacity of 10 to the 20th integer of floating point operations per second for AI. So you might be thinking, like, what, what is that? Well, if you look at the very, very, very high-end computer you can buy from NVIDIA for AI training, that is the NVIDIA DGX H100 server, which cost a ton of money and it basically is rated at 32 petaflops, which is around 10 to the 16 floating point operations a second. So if you wanted to reach that 10 to the 20th integer, you would have to have 100, I'm sorry, 10, yeah, 10,000 DGX H100s. They cost 400 grand each. So you're not going to do this in your garage at your university or anything right right now, right? Maybe the NSA can, maybe China can, maybe some really big entities can, but for the most part, you're not gonna be able to fire up that kind of, uh, of computing power. But if we know anything from Moore's Law, we know that uh, these are gonna be broken. We know that there's a lot of organizations out there trying to build better and faster GPUs and actual AI onto those chips that are there. But one of the other things the Biden administration calls out, which brings us back to the topic of this video, is they want to red team the AIs that are out there. Now, from a cybersecurity point of view, if you have an AI application, you know, there's the traditional thing. There could be a vulnerability in that application, right? Just because I'm using an AI to do some analysis of my documents doesn't mean that if I'm an idiot and I store those documents insecurely or in a way that can they can be hacked into and gotten, that's, you know, that's a problem, right? But that's traditional cybersecurity. What are the models that can be used to actually go after AI? So I'm a big fan of uh, the Berryville uh, Machine Learning Institute, Institute for Machine Learning. This is uh, done by uh, um, Gary McGraw. And uh, I've been following Jim's work for a long time. He basically started most of the software auditing that's out there as an industry that we know today. And at the end of the day, AI, even though as transformative as it is, 
you could say it's a parlor trick, but this is really like the next generation of computation and how we're going to interact with our data and our computers. But anyway, uh, what they've done at the Institute is they've come up with uh, about seven different models that you can use and think about for attacking an AI. We're going to review them briefly and uh, I'm going to do some visual uh, examples of them here. So the first one is input manipulation. So let's say you have an AI, perhaps even an optical AI, and it's been designed to recognize things like stop signs versus speed signs. How would you, if you could modify a stop sign to make it slightly look like a speed sign, a, a speed limit sign, you could trick the AI into doing something that, that, that it wasn't intended to do, right? So this is input manipulation. We've seen a lot of uh, kids at schools you know, put uh, scarves and faces and tattoos on their face to avoid facial recognition, that sort of thing. So the second thing is data manipulation. And this is when most people think about when they think about uh, backdooring an AI system, right? If you're going to train an AI with a bunch of data, can I poison that data with information that, you know, makes it, uh, uh, you know, better for, for my benefit, right? Maybe, maybe we're training it to attack Russian tanks and the Russians somehow break in and they make uh, their, their T-90s and T-72s look like uh, M1 Abrams takes. And there's all sorts of ways that you could think about uh, doing this, especially since the data sets for training these AI systems are very, very complex. You can actually do model manipulation where maybe somebody is, it's just, this is just like that Russian data thing, but instead of being malicious and training my own AI, maybe I want to put an AI out there with a certain backdoor, with a certain behavior, that um, that I don't know about. This is just kind of like you know maybe I'm going to sell RMM software and it, it's got a backdoor for my intelligence agency. You know that 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 type of thing. That's an attack I don't think we've seen yet. Uh, the 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 Barrymore Institute says they haven't seen that, but it's definitely something that, that I think we all know that's out there. Now the next couple models are sort of the opposite of those attacks, right? If there's this model that's out there. What can I do to gain information about how the model was made? So the first thing they talk about is input extraction. Can I do something like present the model with a name and then get a face, right? If this model is trained on private data, for example, to do recognition of people, perhaps it recognizes Ron Gula when, when, and it says Ron Gula. Is there a way to attack that system where I can tell it Ron Gula and have it generate an image in my face. And when you think about all the different applications for AI, you might be able to use this to get medical records. You might be able to use this to get uh, legal records. There's a lot of private data that's being synthesized to train these AIs. If you can flip the inputs and outputs and gain some of that private data on the back end, that's a valid attack. Now, if you're going to do that for one person, the next category they talk about is data extraction, where if you can do that for just getting my face, that's it. Why, why can't I do it and get everybody's faces? If some of these AI models can be reversed in such a way that you can get large amounts of those data sets. Now, the last thing that can really happen here is that if you put a lot of effort in training these models and curating your data and producing these LMMs, maybe there's a way to kind of predict what that LMM is doing or these models are doing in the first way. And this is called model extraction. A lot of times, if you think about the power and energy of gridding all of those NVIDIA computers or whatever kind of GPUs you're using to train your model, you know, it might be cheaper for me to just reverse engineer that model and come up with something that, that can be done. And that attack is called, um, it's called model extraction. So I highly recommend people go to the Institute. What I like about what, what they've done is they were doing a lot of these papers sort of before ChatGPT came out there. I think a lot of us joined the AI industry and realized its impacts on cybersecurity, you know, well after ChatGPT kind of came out and applications like, 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 like Dolly and so on. But for the most part, I find these papers very sound. There's a whole bunch more technical stuff that they do there. And I recommend if you're following AI and you're following this kind of industry, go check them out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope uh, you'd like to and subscribe to our channel. If you want to learn more, go visit us at uh, gula.tech. Check out some of our other AI-related videos here. Connect with me on LinkedIn, chat me up, give, leave a comment on the video. I'm Ron Gula. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.